Hey folks, welcome back to Gaming Garbage, where we take a look at games, chat about the gaming news in the industry, and of course stream for fun. Today we're going to be going over gaming news for October 22nd through the 28th. I'm redoing this, if some of you saw it on YouTube or you've seen it on Twitch. I gotta redo it because the audio is all messed up. I got just huge gaps of where there's no audio. I'll have a little bit of my voice and then nothing again. So I'm not sure what happened with that one. Um, that's kind of a new issue. Hopefully that's not happening this time. But, hey, I want to talk about Spider-Man 2. I want to take a look at the kind of next upgrade in requirements for PC. For And Alan Wake 2 shows us this. We finally got the PC requirements for hardware. And let me tell you, it is definitely a bit of a step up. We're going to talk, too, about something about Elden Ring, though it's not what you think. And then we're also going to take a look at uh, Metal Gear Solid Collection that came out. Man, what a disappointment. We'll get into that as well. Also, why is Battlefield 2042 doing doing so well? And then we're going to also talk about Payday 3. So we got quite a bit to chat about. If you're enjoying the uh, content and stuff, don't only just, you know, sub and like to uh, Gaming Garbage 22 on YouTube or Don't Tread on the on Twitch, but also share. This channel is really going to be successful off of just some feedback, nice feedback from you guys. Uh, about the channel and improvements or what I'm doing well. Thank you for those that tell me. And then also just sharing these videos and this channel with other people. Friends and family and co-workers and whoever else. This channel is really going to grow based off of you folks. So let's go ahead and get into it. So Spider-Man 2 sold 2.5 million copies in the first 24 hours. Which is pretty in impressive. It's Metascore. I did have a Metascore last week, uh, but it's actually ticked up a little bit on the user side. Um, it's still at 90 for official critics, and then user score is now 9.1. So it just went up a tenth, but it still it still went up some. And uh, people are honestly really enjoying the game, so congratulations to Insomniac um, for uh, selling quite a few copies, I'm sure, in the next coming month. We'll have some sales numbers for maybe their first week of sales or the first couple of weeks of sales. But yeah, Spider-Man 2 is doing really good and the numbers are holding up. So let's talk about Alan Wake 2. So we know this game's coming out actually fairly soon. And uh, we got some hardware requirements for PC. Now I know this doesn't relate to console. And I'm on console myself. But I used to be a PC guy. So I appreciate the people that can actually take the time and nowadays have the money to actually have a really nice PC. And I do think PC is definitely worth it if you're willing to go through the money and all of the trouble and everything. Because you can really kind of design and get what you want, but there is something where you got to be able to upgrade every so often. So normally a graphics card is about is good for about four to five years, and then it's time to upgrade. And so the minimum requirements for Alan Wake 2 that we have on PC is you need at least probably a RTX 2060 or a RAD 6600. Uh, and that's bare minimum. Um, and then recommended is RTX 3070 and the RAD 6700 XT. And that's starting to get pretty expensive. So taking a look at Newegg, um, which sometimes there's sales on Newegg. Uh, even though they don't necessarily promote them very much. But I always suggest checking out Newegg for PC parts. They're usually a great resource for that. But the RTX 3070, we're looking at $400 to $900 just for the graphics card. And then for the RAD 6700 XT, we're looking at about $350 to $650. Uh, these were numbers that, um, as of like last week at an earlier time. Uh, like a few days ago. So those are pretty recent. You can also take a look for Black Friday. I'm sure New Egg is going to have quite a few Black Friday sales um, for a lot of stuff, including graphics cards. But yeah, graphics cards are so expensive now. It's crazy. But uh, but yeah, having to upgrade, oh man, it can get really expensive. And you got to make sure stuff works with your motherboard. You got to make sure that... Uh, you know, you don't want to buy the minimum either. If you got to buy the, at least the minimum, you're looking at 250 or $300. But you don't really want to have to do that. But yeah, right now, the uh, yeah, you're looking at at least recommended minimum 400 bucks, And uh, that's a good chunk of money, especially right now for most of us. Also, let's chat about Elden Ring a little bit. So, this is a wonderful game that came out. 
you know, about two and a half years ago now. Wow, it's hard to believe it's been out that long. We're still waiting on DLC. I do believe the DLC is going to be coming out sometime in the first half of uh, of 2024. The anniversary would make sense uh, for the actual launch of the game. And we ha do have a leak that it looks like it's going to be February of 2024. So we'll see. We haven't heard anything official yet, but we do have the official launch launch, excuse me, of a clothing line called the Lands Between Collection. And this is put out by Arc 8. And this is uh this was just launched on October 19th. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because the pricing. So remember, this is just uh, official designs and uh it's pretty crazy what some of the prices are because we're looking at $145 uh, all the way up to 1700 bucks. Think of that. Who's got that kind of money right now? But yeah, they sell about nine different items, clothing items. And yeah, we're looking at like shirts and hoodies and coats. And yeah, this collection has been worked on since before Elden Ring launched. So we're looking at it quite a while ago, but it's finally launching right into recession. And uh, I feel bad for them in a way because they are kind of a luxurious brand for the most part. Um, but luxury brands don't usually sell very well during a recession, especially if it's a pretty bad one. And so, uh, yeah, good luck to Arc 8. Really a horrible time to actually launch um, that product. But, you know, realistically, if you don't want to spend 150 bucks minimum, uh, there's still some Elden Ring stuff out there right now on Amazon where you can easily pay, you know, anywhere from 30 to maybe $100 max, depending on what uh, clothing item you're looking at. So yeah, save your money. <laughs> it's the same pictures, folks. You don't need anything fancy. So, man, we really got to talk about Metal Gear Solid Collection Volume 1. So this is a $60 Master Collection Volume 1 that has Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3, and then Metal Gear 1 and 2 for regular Nintendo. Also, audio, you know, and... Uh, but yeah, it's crazy what's going on with this one. So right now on Metacritic, the uh, official critics have it at a 78. But there's huge disparity here because the users have it at a 3.9. And I'm just going to read this list as to why. So, unstable frames. There's no remaster to today's quality for anything. Um, there's no widescreen. There's no button mapping for PC. And the button mapping itself is really bad. There's also no gameplay improvements. There's no audio settings. There's no resolution settings. There's no way to go back to the main menu when you're in one of the games. Um, also, the Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2 were already remastered like 10, 12 years ago. And these were remastered in 1080p. Well, they're locked at 720 which is horrible. That's horrible. Like, why they even did that, I have no idea. Emulators have also done a better job of these games with having widescreen, better resolution, consistent frame rates during gameplay. There's also a lack of language options. And then there's issues with the DLC and then some of the boss fights and, and uh, codec calls in the game, especially Metal Gear Solid 1. Those were the examples that I saw. There's silent audio. At least you have subtitles. Thank goodness. At least you can read what is supposed to be said. But this is horrible quality. Also, if you buy the Switch version, you don't get Metal Gear Solid 1. That's on the freaking cover art of the, of the you know, the cover, the, the case, whatever. I can't even spit it out. This is so frustrating. And yeah, the physical doesn't even include that. So it's like, what's even the point? And then, too, this download si the, the actual game sizes for these are way too big. If they technically didn't upgrade anything, adapt anything, improve anything, then why are the file sizes so big for some of these games? That doesn't really make sense either. And then the cherry on top is that a modder has added resolution support in hours for PC. Not even kidding. So why couldn't Konami do this? And this isn't the first Metal Gear screw-up that they've had. They also released Metal Gear Solid Survive after they kicked out Kojima, which is the main original founder of Metal Gear Solid. 
with the uh, 3D versions, and it's been an amazing series. A uh, wonderful story. But why couldn't Konami even uh, even put in resolution support when a modder can do it in a few hours? And the fact, too, that the emulators also do it better? If you grew up with these, boy, don't bother wasting your time. Um, but for some people, you know, they think it's great. I'll call them Egg. But there was a reviewer that I read on Metacritic, a user, that gave it a 10 out of 10. And this is what he said. He's like, this is not a remaster. It's just a collection. And quote, it's nice that they have the codec and boss audio that are still distorted to keep the original essence. Are you serious? Are you serious? We're not talking about changing the language or changing even the voice acting or anything. We're keeping all of that the same, but it's like you wouldn't want better audio quality. Because we're talking Metal Gear Solid 1 was released in 99. Think of that. 99. This game's pretty freaking old. But you're telling me you wouldn't want just some improvement, some graphical improvement? Because then otherwise, basically, you're paying the game for 20 bucks, since it's a $60 collection, and the pr three primary games are number 1, 2, and 3... And you're not doing any improvements on this? It's just kind of weird. And then, I guess some people, they want, like... They want this as kind of like a collectible, maybe. Uh, but good grief. When they can't even have the frame rate or the resolution be the original resolution from the games when they came out previously, that's not an improvement, and that's not original. Again... Stuff is locked at 720p instead of 1080p for number 2 and 3 remasters. So yeah, Konami put minimal effort in this. And uh, honestly, if you already have the HD collection for 2 and 3, just, just keep that. And right now the scores for them are 89 and 89. They're wonderful. People really enjoyed them. And so why even, why even make this collection? It's just a money grab, folks. And the thing that bugs me, too, is we're also looking at um, this being Volume 1. So Volume 2 is likely going to be Metal Gear Solid 4, Number 5, and Peace Walker. And maybe we'll get the prologue in there called Ground Zeroes. But, gosh, I am not excited for Volume 2. Um, if this is uh, if this is an issue, also with Metal Gear Solid 4, there's also some copyright issues with Apple, and so is Kojima going to do the work to be able to uh, use those intellectual properties like models and such in Metal Gear Solid 4, so that they can put it in the next collection, or are they just going to redo it, and then what's the quality of that going to look like? Honestly, I'm kind of concerned. I mean, again, bare minimum for Volume One collection. Volume 2 collection probably isn't going to be much better. And then uh, this also brings up what Delta is going to look like. So Metal Gear Solid Delta is coming out. We don't know exactly when. My guess is 25. And because uh, most games today have to be delayed. <laughs> oh, that's so frustrating too. But anyway, so Delta is basically a complete remaster of Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, which was the most wonderful game. Many people think it's literally the best one um, out of the uh, 3D series. And uh, But yeah, if again, what graphical quality is Delta going to be if they just want to shove this out in worse quality than what the games originally were? Even over 15 years ago. I mean, come on! This is ridiculous. So yeah, I, I mean, Konami's already had some issues. Again, Metal Gear Survive was nothing like Metal Gear Solid. And uh, they really just screwed the pooch on that one. And so it makes me leery about Delta 2. I think I'll honestly wait for it to come out um, so that I can buy it and play it. Uh, I would love to show it on the channel, but good grief, I don't want to burn my money, especially at $70 a game now. So Konami did say with all of the backlash, they did say there are going to be some post patches. They're going to focus on, um, you know, some some issues with quality. They're going to look into some other issues with like stability and with frame rate and stuff. But again, we don't really know when these are coming or how much they're really going to try to fix. Because remember, they're still working on Metal Gear Solid Delta, so they got to have their fingers in that pie too. And also making 
Volume 2. So that'll be coming as well. But yeah, what a disappointment. You know, this is just another great example. Just like the Red Dead collection, which didn't even have all of the DLC. They want to push it for 50 or 60 bucks. When you can just buy the entire Game of the Year edition, edition on 360. Get all DLC, including the base game. And everything's r literally right there for 30 bucks. Though Konami was smart with this one. They have actually taken the games that used to be available through the store... And they've now taken them offline. So isn't that nice? Because they were going to put out this Master Collection. What a freaking joke. So that they could get another 60 bucks from you. I mean, it's just stupid. It's just a waste of money. So yeah, save it, folks. If, if you're totally brand new to the franchise, yes, this would probably be worth getting. The gameplay is going to be different. The camera angles are going to be weird. It's going to take some getting used to. But Metal Gear Solid is really what created the 3D um, espionage, you know, stealth action that created the roadmap for Splinter Cell, that created the roadmap for Assassin's Creed, and etc. I mean, this really, um, yeah, this really created kind of that genre in this e era of gaming. Maybe Siphon Filter was before that, and there was also probably Mission Impossible in there too. For PlayStation, I remember playing those. Um, but yeah, Metal Gear Solid was so freaking iconic, man. It's amazing. Okay. So, why is Battlefield doing so well? So, we know that Battlefield came out. Uh, it's almost basically been two years now. And uh, when it came out, boy, it was not what people were expecting. There was less gadgets. There were less guns. The whole class system was all screwed. They were trying to make it like a uh, Rainbow Six Siege kind of a deal. Um, there was really no focus or push to kind of play as a team. Um, the gunplay was also a mess. The servers were screwed. There were bugs and glitches. Uh, just the ridiculousness of, like, the hovercraft and this kind of thing. Um, and I kind of know what they were going for. There's no campaign either. And so if the multiplayer is screwed, there's literally nothing else to lean back on. Uh, which is incredibly frustrating. So this game flopped really hard. And, uh, you know, I played it. Man, I was so frustrated. Battlefield is still one of my favorite franchises, but I love the old ones. And uh, didn't like 5 as much. Really enjoyed 4. Um, well, I really enjoyed 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1. Uh, the bad companies in Battlefield 1. But uh, good grief. They really screwed this one. So, But what's crazy is that we got to see the numbers again hit launch numbers we haven't seen that in a long time a lot of us have written this game off already and they all uh, have now hit a new peak of 107,000 peak players which is now actually higher than what it was at launch and these numbers literally just shot right up you can see it right on the on the graph so what happened well they had a free-to-play weekend the same time PlayStation had their modern warfare 3 beta and a lot of people have given a lot of kickback, which I think is warranted, on Modern Warfare 3. Again, this is just a DLC game where it's just remastered Modern Warfare 2 maps and already existing maps. You'll be able to port most of the guns in the game are going to be ported over from the progress you already made in Modern Warfare 2. You're also going to be able to port over skins, some skins, and, and some other forms of progress. But they're adding Black Cell, they're adding blue uh blueprint weapons um which i was not excited about in vanguard because of the adv the advantage disadvantage pay to win aspect of of that system uh plus two just the huge push on bundles is unlike anything we've ever seen before so modern warfare 3 beta was not accepted very well and then battlefield had a free-to-play weekend and so Probably some people hopped over there and wanted to see what was going on. And so, and, and the uh, the reviews that we're getting um, from people that played on the free weekend are actually giving it a higher score uh, than, than what it used to be. Again, it's not great. The scores are still in the 50s, which is low. Uh, but the, store, the scores used to be in the 40s. So we've seen about a 10, 15 point jump which is pretty good it's an improvement so what's been going on well let's dig into this 
So, so far, there's actually new leadership for the uh, for Battlefield 2042. And this is entrusted to one single person that's got experience in the industry and also worked on other projects like some of the older Call of Duties, which is great. And so the entire vision of Battlefield 2042 is now just through one person, not a group of people. Also, the new content was paused until they fixed the core game, which is wonderful. So this is why, too, we didn't really have content for a while, or a content just seemed very, very slow. Also, there's been a new commitment, as uh, technically Battlefield only needed to have four seasons. Well, we're on season six, so this shows like a renewal of commitment for the game. They're really trying to improve it, and every new season has new maps, new weapons, and tools and gadgets, which is great. And then also they're redoing a particular map or two. They already redid some of these maps, but they're really continuing to try to improve things and make the quality of life better for the game. The current leadership is actually listening to the player base. They're taking the criticism and accepting the feedback, and they're making changes and fixes. And that's totally what we want to see. There's also now a dedicated studio for making campaigns for Battlefield. And I think that's kind of nice. Again, if the multiplayer totally sucks, then people don't really want to pay for your game if the multiplayer is broken. And we've already seen, too, that on Modern Warfare 3, there's already hackers in the beta and everything. That was kind of a plaguing mess. And so, uh, yeah, we'll kind of see what happens with, the, with that. Do I expect much to change? Probably not. Um, but and yeah, yeah, there's kind of hackers in every multiplayer game, but um, <clears throat> when multiplayer is your core focus, boy, you really got to try to fix that. Otherwise, it just doesn't make it fun for anybody. So yeah, these newer reviewers, um, yeah, they're giving it better scores. Uh, and what's crazy is, so far, uh... The idea was to make a Battlefield every year, just like Call of Duty. Well, they're retracting that, and now they're going to make a Battlefield not even every other year because they're still trying to fix Battlefield. Now, we don't know exactly what their plan is. We do know that they have a studio to make future campaigns, so we do know there's, there's going to be future iterations for Battlefield, but I'm glad they're going to slow down the progress a little bit because hopefully they can make some better games, better quality, better substance, Games that are less broken or not have to part it out like they did in Battlefield 5. Uh, or totally fix a whole bunch of stuff just like Battlefield 2042. And they can actually start putting out some really wonderful games again. Like Battlefield Bad Companies or number 3 or number 4. Or even Battlefield 1. I'd love to see some more of that. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, currently as things stand, right now uh, the average 24-hour peak is actually higher on Battlefield 2042 than on Call of Duty, which is impressive. And I'm not talking the beta. I'm actually talking Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which, if you're having trouble finding it like I did, <laughs> they're being a little sneaky. They just call it Call of Duty now. They're not calling it Modern Warfare 2. So be sure to... Uh, excuse me. Be sure to type that in. So it does look like Call of Duty finally has some competition. And I still think Call of Duty's winning on console. But now that they have some competition with Battlefield, and I'm not the only person talking about this, uh, I kind of want to try Battlefield 2042 again. And just show you how, how horrible I am at the game. But I'm excited that the leadership is actually caring about the project. They're actually devo devoting more time and energy to improving the game and making it, you know, have better quality of life. And also fixing stuff and adding things, including fixing their crappy maps. And so this does get me excited. I do have a little bit of hope left for the franchise. We'll see what they do with it. Lastly, we got to talk about Payday 3. So the launch for this was super bad. Um, what turned some people off, like myself, was that you have a, had to have a third-party login just for the game. And, nope, I was, uh, I was done with that right away. I already got enough logins for life. I don't need logins for all of my hobbies, too. I already got a login to my Xbox and everything else. Just having another login, man, it's just not... If it was a different type of game or a franchise I really enjoyed, maybe. Uh, but I'm getting older now and I'm a little more cranky and yeah, I just don't need another login. But also they had a really rough launch. 
There were issues with servers. There were also a bunch of bugs in the game. Some game modes didn't want to work. There were crashes, especially again for PC. It was horrible. So yeah, they did work on fixing their max making issues for the most part. Um, but yeah, once they've fixed some of these bugs, they've been working on this huge patch for the quality of life for the game. And this patch is to fix 200 bugs. And the patch has been late. We haven't heard much from the company, and so they finally released something last week to explain why. They found more critical errors. And these errors uh, with their patch and with the game is as designed today. If they implement the patch, they're worried about severe loss of player progress. And they know they can't do that, otherwise they're not going to have a player base anymore. And when we look at the numbers already, Payday 3 is very low in player usage on Steam. And it's also very low in viewer count on Twitch. So the game is already kind of basically died. It is possible that it can come back. They're still working on fixing it, of course. But they're not going to have any more DLC coming out until they can fix this issue. Because they don't want to put out a whole bunch of DLC and then possibly have you lose it all. That'd be a huge problem. Plus, it'd be more stuff for them to just kind of like repatch in and figure out. They already got enough to figure out with this huge issue. But yeah, this is a really big problem for them. Because uh, this was supposed to be their bread and butter for probably a couple of years. And has been nothing but a freaking train wreck. And uh, I can guarantee you they're not making the money they thought they would. So hopefully they can get this fixed. Uh, they are still going to create free content and add it um, before the end of the year and they're hoping th yeah they're working to get the patch fixed and done as quickly as they can but they got to figure out these other critical errors first because yeah if they totally wipe out everything that'll be awful so how long are players willing to wait i don't know i mean are we going to get a lot of new content probably not and then how long is it going to be for the patch how long is it going to take to figure out these critical errors already I really don't know. But yeah, the player count is way down. This is just another example of why it's important to just wait to buy. You know, after launch. Because we've had so many games that are just garbage, screwed, collections, remasters, game of the year editions. It's just so frustrating. I mean, we got examples right here of literally Modern Warfare 3, the Metal Gear Solid Collection. Um, the fact, too, that Spider-Man 2 also has a lot of bugs in it. And some people are really frustrated with that. They've already refunded the game. We will also Battlefield 2042. That was a horrible freaking launch. Payday 3 was a mess. Diablo 4 is junk. Overwatch 2 is done as a game. Uh, because, good grief, they're not even willing to do the content that they promised because, quote, it was too hard. I mean... <laughs> Starfield was a letdown. Forspoken was junk. Gollum, we thought it was the worst game ever. Redfall was a total failure. Well, and then, hey, Rise of Kong, baby. Hold my beer. I mean, it's just like, what is going on with the freaking gaming industry? And honestly, we need to quit buying this stuff at launch. And even Lords of the Fallen, even though it, I'm kind of giving it a pass a little bit, not just because I'm biased, which I'm a, I am a little bit of bias too, but... This is Hexworks' first game, but still, some of the refinement issues with movement, with combat, those problems shouldn't be in the freaking game. And two, we have games that are also delayed multiple times. We almost don't have a single game anymore that's not even delayed. And this has become the new normal. And at some level, folks, it's got to become unacceptable because... The trend is that it's continuing to get worse. It's not just staying bad, it's getting worse. And we've got to work on doing something. And the only influence that we have is withholding money. So wait for the reviews to come out. Wait for the patches. Wait for people to share. Not just these official uh, reviewers that have embargoes that are lifted a few days or a week before launch. We actually want to see and work on real content. We want games like Remnant 2. Or even though Jedi Survivor had some issues, it was still a well-received game. Same with Spider-Man 2. It's got some problems, but but and, and a few of them have kind of been game-breaking, unfortunately. But generally speaking, people are loving Spider-Man 2. And, man, I just it's just tough to swallow that 70 bucks. 
or even to the early access. Like some people paid a hundred dollars <laughs> to to play Starfield five days early, which is totally unnecessary, and then they hated it. And two, with the physical world of gaming disappearing, those physical copies, digital is more difficult to get your refund for. It's not impossible, but it is hard. It is more difficult. And Cyberpunk 2077, I think it had huge potential for future DLCs, but they had to, you know, spend $120 million to fix their game in two years so that they could finally just release one DLC. I mean, come on, folks. This is our hobby, and for some of us, it's our livelihood. And we shouldn't be accepting that level of quality, especially for the price we're paying now. So please... If you got the money, you know, blow it. You know, it's okay. It's your money. But, man, if you can, hold out to make sure that games are good. Because when they're constantly trashed like this, it just wears on you. I know it wears on me. I've been, I've been getting worn on this since, like, Advanced Warfare. And that was a long time ago. That was, like, 2015. But yeah, I'm ready for good stuff again. I'm ready for good quality to be the consistent theme again. So, if you're already doing that, thank you very much. But, you know, maybe that's something people too should consider. Also, I wanted to add, uh, thank you for the newer subscribers and stuff for being a part of the channel. Of course, you can always find me at Twitch at Don't Tread on Thee and also over at YouTube at Gaming Garbage 22 I also want to know, would you guys like to see kind of like a Black Friday overview of some of the sales out there. Of course, most of it's going to be gaming related. It's not like I'm going to do refrigerators and ovens and stuff like that. I'm going to focus on tech and things that definitely we enjoy as streamers, as gamers, and uh, anyway, yeah, there's some of us, we really love our electronics. But w would you guys like to see that? Would you guys kind of like to see an overview of what some of the Black Friday sales are? Because I know I still like going out on Black Friday. And a lot of us, too, we also spend online as well. And so if you're interested in that, please leave a comment and let me know. If I missed anything else, or if you also got comments, go ahead and share those as well. And of course, folks, this channel is going to be successful. Not just me doing my best or, or trying when I can, but also you guys sharing the channel. I really think the channel is going to be successful based off of that. So, yes, subbing and liking and following and all that stuff it helps with the algorithm but really also be active if you're willing to be and share it with people and family and friends and all that stuff so thanks again folks hang in out there it's definitely starting to get cold do a little bit of prep for the winter make sure your fluids are topped off make sure your heater works and make sure your tires aren't completely bare right yeah do a little bit of prep make sure you can gonna be safe out there and I'll see you guys on the next one.